Welcome. My name is Josh Story, and today we are joined by writer, speaker, coach, facilitator extraordinaire, and might I add, fountain pen enthusiast, the <laughs> one and only Doug Neff. Doug, how are you? I'm great. Thanks, Josh. It's good, good to, to have you. And um, so and yeah, it's right here. Uh, let's see. Got a got a green one out today. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So today we are talking about leadership communication. And so I'm going to jump straight into it and ask you, Doug, what is leadership communication? What is leadership communication? Well, a very big question. Those are two very big words. So let's let's break them apart a little bit first. When I think about leadership, I think about working with a group of people driving toward a common goal. So the leader's role is to guide, drive, move that group toward a common goal. Um, and their success is usually measured by, did they reach that common goal? Uh, so that's leadership. Communication, uh, there's a thousand ways you could define communication. I'm going to say it's expressing ourselves in all the ways that humans express ourselves in order to convey some kind of meaning, some kind of information. So if we combine those two things, then leadership communication is conveying meaning through words, pictures, et cetera, hand gestures, in order to help a group reach a common goal. That's leadership communication. I love that. And I would imagine that uh, that's not necessarily something that you're born with. That th there are certain skills involved to actually move people in a certain direction. So what are the leadership communication skills? Leadership communication skills include all the tools that humans have for conveying meaning in order to help that group reach a common goal. So I think of things like speaking, listening, all of our body language, all the ways that we move our hands and arms and hold ourselves, uh, visualization, using, using tools to make visuals, to make things that help people understand things. All of those things are leadership communication skills. So let's say that someone develops all of these skills the big question I think is why are leadership and communication important? Why are leadership and communication important? Well, in order for us to do unique and valuable work together, and that's that's a bar I'm going to put on this conversation. We want to do work that's unique and valuable. Otherwise, the AI will take care of all of it for us, right? <laughs> but group efforts like those require a guiding force. They require a leader to drive the group, help the group reach that goal. And those people, those leaders need to be able to convey meaning and use that skill to start things, to stop things, to adjust things, to make course corrections. And I'll use a story here, Josh. Uh, think of a, a dog musher, a dog sled okay. team, right? Running a race. So right. the leader of that team, that whole team is a totally different species from the dogs. Mm. Yeah. And still through verbal commands, through nonverbal cues, through just sounds like the whip cracking, they have to communicate with that team of dogs. They have to drive them and guide them toward the finish line. And there's another fascinating element here with dog mushers in that as much as they're guiding that dog team, they also have to pay attention and listen to the dog team as they go because those dogs are able to do things and sense things that the human is not able to do. So I think that highlights an important skill that leaders have to develop and it's that art of listening, that art of really paying attention to what the team is needing, what the team is up to and how we're gonna get them to that goal. That's great, that's a great illustration. But let me ask you this, why is communication important in leadership? Why is communication important in leadership? Well, if we think of leadership as the role of a person in guiding or driving a group toward a common goal, then communication is the mechanism. It's the how they do that. So it, I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's think of an orchestra conductor. By definition, a conductor doesn't play an instrument. In fact, a conductor doesn't make any sound during the performance. They don't make an, a sound at all, but they lead that whole orchestra. And they, an orchestra conductor, use verbal communication and nonverbal communication to convey their wishes to the team and bringing a piece of music to life. Now I say verbal, and that's because verbal communication happens in the rehearsal. It's uh, shaping how that orchestra will play that piece of music. But in the performance, 
it's all nonverbal. It's it's the and then it's the the baton. Now, a common question that people ask of orchestra conductors is, well, wouldn't the orchestra sound fine if there was no conductor? Mm. And to some degree, yes, these are professional musicians, you know, for thinking about a professional orchestra. Everyone knows how to play their instrument. Everyone knows how to play their part. And they can play their part without someone waving their arms to make that happen. But everyone is playing their own version of that piece of music. And without a conductor communicating a common vision for the overall piece, you won't achieve the kind of result that you could with a conductor or leader that's able to communicate that vision well. So why is communication important in leadership? It's to create a great result. It's to bring everyone to that final result in a in a beautiful, elegant, uh, unique, special way. That's a great picture. It honestly reminds me a little bit of, say, a a director of a play or a director of a movie, right? Like in the sa same way that the musicians within an orchestra can read the sheet music in front of them and play play their part. Any actor can 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 read lines from the script, but it takes that that director to kind of help shape how they say it and what they do and all those other things to really make it go from here is words on the page to this is a moment in time that moves you and moves an audience. And, and that leadership, I think, really goes goes a long way. Absolutely. Let's say that I want to develop my leadership and communication skills. How would I do do that? How how do I develop my leadership and communication skills? Yeah, how do I develop my leadership and communication skills? Well, like most complex skills, there are a couple different approaches. There are a couple different levels or or altitudes that I think about. One level is informational. And this is like when you're a kid going to school learning the basics of the alphabet, you know, or if you're a musician, it's learning how to read music notation, learning the rules of music theory. It's informational. You can learn it from books, you can learn it from uh, videos. YouTube is a great way to learn things like that. You can you can learn it in all kinds of ways by yourself often. Um, absorbing the rules and getting to know the language of that particular skill set. So with leadership and communication skills, there, there are a lot of fundamentals you can learn. Another level to learning is practice and performance. So this is working with real people on real goals. So with leadership and communication skills. Um, it's it's working with a group of people towards a real goal and maybe it's a lower stakes goal maybe it's a beginner's goal you know in a, in my music example uh learning all the rules and notes doesn't mean you can play the piano it still takes dedicated practice so with leadership and communication skills it means practicing those skills in real live situations learning how to lead and facilitate meetings is a good way to do that little one hour meetings with your team on a weekly basis learning how to do that better more effectively is a good place um, and then practice is punctuated by performance also in in music in sports uh, in in plays and movies and things like that you're practicing and rehearsing but you also have the uh a game that you you want to compete in you're right. competing against someone else or with music you have a recital or a concert at some point in the year and that's where you're going to have a live audience and it's it's important you're going to dress up for that you're going to you're going to put on the uniform you know <laughs> right and i think you need those too so i think you need to be practicing leadership and communication skills in times where it really matters, in times where it's a it's a big quarterly meeting or it's a big annual event that you're leading and facilitating the group towards. And then on top of all this, um, you know, learning the fundamentals, practicing effectively, having performances or high stakes situations once in a while, I would add the benefit of a skilled teacher or coach. When we're exploring and learning about things that are new to us, a good coach or teacher they can't replace the hard work of practice, but while you're practicing, they can help you refine that practice and they can help us get to a faster and more effective results than if we had just done it alone. So a few, a few tiers of how we can uh, practice and, and develop those skills over time. Yeah, that's great. Where can I find good leadership communication training? That's a great question, Josh. Uh, where can I find good leadership communication training? Well, you know, I'll throw out some ideas and we'll see if maybe you have some to add to it. But I think there are 
There are traditional L&D resources. You know, if you work for a company, there's probably a lot of resources that your company already provides that has uh, training for good leadership communication. There's online learning, there's instructor-led learning, um, whether it's a class that's live in a classroom or, or in person or virtual, but there's an instructor, it's actually happening in the moment. There's private coaching where you're working one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Those are some that come to mind to me. Are there, are there any that you can think of that I've left out? I mean, Duarte.com is where I typically go for my leadership training. Uh, no, I mean, I think you're spot on. I think that there's, you know, a lot of great organizations out there that do a handful of those things. What, one more thing on that, Josh, is that I think it's especially helpful to find a learning resources, a, a learning resource that can cross all of those different ways of learning and that's built on top of a common methodology. So, you know, I've, I've spoken before about learning music, learning to become a good musician, or the same right. is true even in, in learning a sport, learning how to play basketball. You're, no matter who you learn it from, they're dealing with the same rules. They're dealing with, uh, they may have a slightly different methodology, but the, the same rules are in place. So working with uh, a company, learning these leadership and communication skills from a company that has a common methodology across all of their training is really helpful, I think. Um, and that's where a company like Duarte.com is helpful in that everything at Duarte, whether you're learning uh, online, uh, asynchronous, yeah, or you're learning in an in instructor-led training, or you're having private coaching, all of those things are using the same methodology to teach those skills. So you can shift between those formats when it makes sense for you. How about executive leadership? Where can I find executive leadership training programs? Executive leadership training programs are a different, uh, a little bit of a different animal because executives tend to want to move more quickly through mm. those fundamentals and methodologies. Um, executives uh, are much more careful with their time and they're less likely to spend time watching an hour and a half video uh, to, to learn those, those fundamentals. So. I've found that most can benefit from a bigger focus on coaching. Uh, a coach is gonna be able to sit there and offer you some fundamentals and be able to tell right away whether you've gotten it and yeah. whether or not you need a little bit more instruction or whether you're, you know, you're good, you're set, uh, we can move on now. So a, a coach, while a coach is usually, a private coach is a larger investment, um, Financially, it's often beneficial for someone who, who really values their time like that because you can move through those things very quickly, especially if you're a fast learner. Um, and then they can get right to the things that uh, are holding you up, right to the things that you're stuck on. Um, traditional speaker coaches or leadership coaches can be very effective. I think it's especially helpful when you have a coach that can work across a variety of communication methods. At Duarte, for instance, our speaker coaches are also speech writers and presentation content developers. This gives them the ability to work with our executive clients in a number of ways, whether we're working on a presentation with you or just general communication skills. Our coaches can, uh, can stay with you through that whole process and reinforce our methodology, uh, be teaching that to you along the way. Last question. How do I improve leadership communication skills? How do I improve leadership communication skills? Well, like most complex skills, there are a couple of different approaches or levels. And one level is informational. It's those learning models, methods, even the vocabulary we use. So I mention music whenever I'm talking about this subject. Uh, in, in music, uh, a beginner needs to learn how the staff works, how the notes appear on the staff, what those little marks on the paper mean, what are what's the name of that note uh, that's a C sharp. You know, they need to learn that right. stuff. In in English, when when you're learning to write or speak, you need to learn the alphabet. You need to learn how words and sentences are put together. You have to learn that stuff before you can do the rest. In basketball, you need to learn how to dribble the ball while you walk. Uh, and do those two <laughs> things at the same time. You know, this, right. these are beginner steps. So there's that level. And then there's the practice and performance step. And that's where you're getting in a game and you're playing basketball with your friends in a low stakes environment. And that's when you're playing music and you're practicing in a, in a room by yourself. 
and that's when you're you're writing and it's writing in a journal you're writing uh things that aren't graded things things that uh you're not selling to a client um that low stakes practice and then there's a, another level of practice that's performance that's uh you not just playing ba pickup basketball but we want to see you play in a game we want to know how you do when there's a, a competitor and with music, we want you to be putting on a recital or a concert once in a while when there's a live audience who's there expecting a good show. And with writing, it's it's uh, writing for stakes. This is gonna be published somewhere. This is, Other people are going to read this and have opinions about it. Um, and then on top of all this, there's, you know, so we have those, those layers of learning the fundamentals, practice, higher stakes practice or performance. And then working with a coach through all of those levels. And I think a coach can be especially helpful when we're exploring and learning about things that are new to us because we don't know what's ahead. We don't know what we don't know. Right. A coach can help us head off unforeseen challenges. A, a coach can recognize what our strengths are and steer us into the best way to learn according to our strengths. A coach can uh, help us when we run into something sticky and get us through that more quickly than if we were working through it on our own. doesn't mean we couldn't learn those things on our own, but a, a coach can accelerate that process and make it more effective. Well, Doug, thank you so much for taking time to help us talk about leadership communication. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks, Josh.